Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Friday night at the drive-in movie. But wait a minute, that's not a movie. That's the ball game. It's opening day, 2020 style. Halfway humid and 100% hot. The weekend is here. We'll show you how high those temperatures are going and our first potential hurricane of the season coming up. All right, Ben, we're going to begin, though, with the story behind this video that now has more than a million views online. You'll watch as a Macomb County woman sets a Jeep on fire and then gets that unexpected surprise as it explodes. Good to have you with us tonight at 11. Tonight, we spoke with the owner of that Jeep, and we're getting to see what it looks like now. Yeah, this is what the Frazier woman charged with arson looks like after the explosion center flying into another car. The Macomb County Sheriff's Department says 26-year-old Sydney Parham has minor burns and cuts. This happened Wednesday at the San Remo Villa Apartments near Shook and 994 in Harrison Township. Mar McDonald is there live. Mar, you talked to the man targeted Give us the backstory here. What happened? Kimberly, first of all, you got to take a look at this to give you an idea how bad this fire was. This is a pile of melted Jeep. When you look around the parking lot here, there's still a huge debris field. And you're right. We did speak to the guy who owns that Jeep, and he would like you to know one thing. Yes, he does know the woman who's accused of torching his Jeep. No, he says that is not his girlfriend. The video is everywhere. An enterprising neighbor was up at 8 Wednesday morning and caught it all on camera. The woman busts out a window in the Jeep, pours gasoline inside, and then throws a match. The force of the explosion she's caused throws her backward, but she crawls back to pick up the gas can and takes off as the Jeep begins to go up in flames. Naya Ashford lives in the San Remo apartment complex, and she saw this video on social media, having no idea it went on right outside her apartment. When I was looking at it, I was I was laughing really hard. I thought, I don't know, I didn't think it was here, so I thought it was really funny. And then I came outside and I seen all the debris and the mark on my car and I was like, oh. So then I was looking in the camera, I was like, that Equinox, that's, that's my car, <laughs> that's me. Luckily, Naya's car only has an ash mark. Not everybody else in the parking lot was as lucky. The flames melted two cars. That Jeep was all of three months old, and this is all that's left. The owner of it, Avery Stevenson, shared the video he took when he went to the impound lot to try and get the plate off his Jeep. Stevenson didn't want to go on camera, but he did tell us that while he knows 26-year-old Sydney Parham, who has been arrested for this, she was not his girlfriend. As to a possible motive, he says he's not quite sure. He woke up to the boom of his Jeep exploding on Wednesday, rushed to his balcony, pulled out his phone, and couldn't believe what he was seeing. Back here live now, Parham has been charged with arson. You can see from her mugshot, she's got a couple burns on her face. The Sheriff's Department says she's going to be okay. She is expected back in court on August 5th. We're live in Harrison Township tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. I, I am just the video. I'm just speechless. And it's amazing that she wasn't hurt more than just you said, just a few burns. And that's it. it it's just incredible. <laughs> it is incredible, Kimberly. Yeah, and yeah. apparently everybody on the Internet thinks it is, too, Indeed. because it is yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. OK, Mara, thanks. Nice summer night out there on this Friday evening. Yeah, but uh, enjoy it while it lasts because the humidity is about to make a return in a big way. Let's get over to Ben with a preview of the weekend forecast. Ben. Kevin, Devin, you're right. It is coming back and we have been no stranger to 90s this month. So an average day uh, seems like a vacation, especially with the low humidity that we had. We made it into the uh, mid 80s here. 85 is where we maxed out. But you can see on the other side of the lake, Minneapolis at 92. And yes, we're planning on seeing that by the end of the weekend. What we're not planning on seeing anytime soon is rain. And there's really a, hardly a cloud in the Great Lakes right now. We're going to have to wait until Monday to get a good chance of wet weather in here. But we are going to see plenty of heat. 88 tomorrow, 91 Sunday, and we'll see the humidity increase. So we'll talk more about how it's going to feel on Sunday. We've got Gonzalo, we've got Hannah, and a potential third storm to talk about in the Atlantic tropical season where that's headed and what part of the U.S. is going to be affected. All coming up in a few minutes, guys.
All right, Ben, let's move now to the coronavirus and new information about testing here in Michigan. The state says almost 4% of tests have come back positive this week. Today, Michigan reported 594 new cases with three more lives lost to the virus. The entire Michigan State football team will suspend workouts and quarantine for 14 days. A second staff member and player tested positive for the virus. And Governor Gretchen Whitmer extended a ban on family visiting nursing homes through August 31st. There's an exception for people who want to see someone seriously hurt or in hospice care. Coronavirus test results are back for dozens more students enrolled in summer school in Detroit Public Schools. The city says an additional 57 students were tested and no one tested positive. Out of the 319 total tested, two have tested positive for the virus. That's less than a 1% infection rate. Superintendent Dr. Nikolai Vidi says given the infection rate in the entire city, it was inevitable there would be positive cases. Now the 2 of 274 means the infection rate didn't increase, meaning because you went to face-to-face -face summer school, you weren't infected by COVID, which means that our safety protocols and standards are working. Dr. Vidi says the students who tested positive were not from the same school and do not live in the same neighborhood. A new twist in the case of a woman whose burned body was found in an Oakland County recreation area. Investigators believe her death may be connected to her career as a professional poker player. The body of 33-year-old Susie Zhao was discovered in the Pontiac Lake recreation area earlier this month. Police say she was a poker player who had just returned from Los Angeles to live with family. Police say her death could be related to her travels on the poker circuit. Her social media states that she plays high stakes poker for a living with earnings of nearly $200,000. State Attorney General's office says there is not enough evidence to charge the police officers who shot and killed a man outside of a baby shower. Theodius Gray was shot by St. Clair Shores police outside of a, a Lakeland Manor banquet hall. This is back in 2018. The Attorney General's office says Gray pulled a gun on people at the hall, then ignored officers' commands, and then fired on them. Police returned fire, killing Gray. Gray is also accused of killing a police canine. That case at the time sparked protests when some felt it was prematurely closed and that officers were qu too quickly cleared of wrongdoing. Tomorrow, a big federal boost for the unemployed is set to run out. Michigan's Unemployment Insurance Agency says that $600 additional payment from the federal government will expire. The state's weekly payments of $362 will continue. Right now, it's unclear if Congress will extend it. Today, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell suggested a deal may take several weeks. A welcome sign today for more than four months into the pandemic. 0-2, oh, off the end of the bat, in for a base hit. Tigers baseball back to action today, and man, have we missed it. Yeah, and, and you know what? Regardless of the outcome of the game, it's clear that there <laughs> is a thirst for live sports right now. Let's get to Jason Colthorpe in Lake Orion, where he found Tigers fans taking in the season, season opener in a way they never imagined. And right here, Sam so Keep tight towards these cars. That was a perfect excuse to get out. We're out of the house on a Friday night, and that's exciting. Instead of a drive-in movie Friday night. It's different, but it's just like opening day. But baseball is back, and we are overjoyed. Canterbury Village hosted a Tigers opening day watch party. We missed you. It's great to see you again. I mean, yeah, everybody's got all their gear on. I think it's great. Families are sitting around having a good time. Everybody's buying a beer. They're getting a hot dog, a brat. It's a lot better than sitting at home and watching. And with no fans allowed in the stadiums for this shortened 60-game slate. Kobe Jones has a one-out single here in the third. There may be similar scenes this season. Thank you. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. You know, opening day in, in Detroit is sacred. It's a part of our culture. You know, obviously not having it this year, it, it's, uh, it's affected a lot of people. And this whole thing has affected a lot of people. But just having baseball right now makes all the difference. Funny how baseball can, can just give you some peace. You can kind of escape the, the, the current circumstances of the world by, you know, it, um, by enjoying a, enjoying a game of baseball together. Baseball, I think, kind of brings everybody together. It's kind of like the first sport. So, and Detroit's one of the originals. So definitely brings us together. Go Tigers! I don't think this year I'm not counting on a World Series ring. The weather's beautiful, the Tigers are playing, hey, it's all good. True wins could be hard to come by for this team, but on this unusual opening day in an unusual season, enthusiasm amongst these fans certainly is not. 
at Canterbury Village in Lake Orion. Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. And Jamie will have complete highlights from the Tigers-Reds game coming up in sports. That was cool to see. All right, getting around Oakland County could be a little tricky this weekend. A big stretch of I-75 just closed for the weekend from 8 Mile to Square Lake Road. Traffic will be detoured to Woodward. Crews will be demolishing bridges and working on the freeway as part of the ongoing construction. The freeway is expected to be back open before the Monday morning rush hour. Is the future of space operations right here in Metro Detroit? City of Macomb County takes a big step forward in trying to become a major hub for the Department of Defense. Also, passengers thrown from their seats screaming in panic. Tonight, there are claims that the U.S. military is to blame. But first, lights, sirens, weapons. Deputies bust a man pretending to be one of them, and they need your help to answer a question that has them especially concerned. 